Ladies, and gentlemen, and gender non conformists, I give you a three, and a two, and a one. It's January 5th, 2019. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. <laughs> I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that, <laughs> that makes me carry it. I'm a 2020, by don't the way. Don't hurt nobody the with your bad self. And welcome to Comes Out Loud, the one in 2020, not 2019, which I did correct myself after I hit my thing. <laughs> Bear Call Outcast, Adventure in Length. Uh, it's that thing. Year turns over. You fuck up the date a bunch of times okay. before you finally get used to it. Yeah. Look, I see clearly now, okay? The rain is gone. Oh, it's also 2020. I can see all obstacles in my in way. My way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're going with the song, but I'm. Punny on I the know. fact that it's 2020 as in vision. I know. Can't take these people anywhere. Are we Anyways, there yet? folks. <laughs> well, welcome to the year in review. Well, while it is 2020, we're talking about last year. We're talking about uh, 2019. It's debatably a new decade. I mean, technicalities will say, yeah. no, technically the, the decade doesn't start until 2021. Yeah. So, about that, before Uh-oh. we get into today's show. Uh oh. No, no. Because I read an article about this, and there are two main camps as to whether or not a decade starts on the zero year or on a one year. And I'm sure Philip, in our live chat audience, as a mathematician analytical person, will have much to say about this. So just hold your britches. <laughs> it depends on how you count a decade. Technically, a decade is any 10 year span. Boom. True. Now, that being said, if you were to go back in time, humanity doesn't technically have an origin year. Like, we have no such thing as this was the very first year. So to say that we start at year zero or that we start at one is just a matter of opinion. It's kind of like flavor. It's like, do you want raspberry or do you want kumquats? Doesn't matter. So They're yeah, both fruit. Are, which is, which is blueberry. The, this is why I, I'm saying it is debatably the first year of the decade which means it could be or it could not be depending on I don't how, think how it's you really do. there's a there's debatable. a debate on it there's because when you look at at our current calendar we are in the year uh year of our lord 2020 no ad but was there a year 0 ad or did it go from 1 bc to 1 ad and then there's no zero and then there's a thing so that's why I say there's a debate to it. Time is a human construct. It doesn't matter anyways. Exactly. So, we, it's, However, it's our way of organizing time. For the record, Lloyd says in the chat, the decade starts when I bloody say it does. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Lloyd. She has spoken. She has spoken. I'll show you now. <laughs> All right. Anyways. <laughs> So, let's go through the numbers here. Shall we? Crunch the numbers. So, for those that don't know, 2019 Year in Review is really Philip's show. Of all the shows in the year, out of the (laughs) roughly 50, 52 that we make, this is the one that he probably enjoys the most. Might even self-pleasures to, because it's all about numbers, baby. And, you know. It's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So Philip writes in the chat because I'm going to call. I'm going to call it like it is. He says our numbering system goes from zero to nine. So this is the beginning of the new decade. Yeah, but, if, <laughs> but again, if there was no zero year, the ten would start at the one. So that's what I'm saying. That's all. That's, that's fair. That's fine. <laughs> 
I'm not going to sit here and debate it. Cause... Yeah. In any case, in 2019, we had uh, 49 public COL episodes released. One that was only patron only. And 20 COLDR episodes were released. Yay. Lord help us. <laughs> we had a couple of off weeks that we weren't able to flash back to. That 49 actually includes those flashback episodes, by the way. Okay, good to know. Um, but there was one patron uh, only episode that I could find. And I think I was the only one we did. Uh, we did drop a number of patrons. So that probably caused part of the no more patron hangout. Okay. Uh, Gary, you, you were the one who collected the social media numbers. Actually, you collected the next two, so I'll give those to you. Oh, okay. Unless you uh, want David to read one of them. I don't no, care. it's fine. In social media, we got new nine new Tumblr followers. Ooh. Ooh. We're at 481 total. How the hell we got nine new ones, I don't know, other than thanks to Damon putting content out there all year long. Let me rephrase that. Thanks to Damon reposting content all year long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, As opposed to him was original. making original <laughs> content and posting it. <laughs> this was a lot of reblogging or whatever they call it. Yeah, they I mean, that's it. still activity. Yes. And it's it works. I'm actually working on it now because I like to keep the queue up to 30 so I can... So, because I post something a, month, a day for 30 days. So, just be aware that we are not necessarily posting any original stuff on there, but we might come back. You never know. We were expecting at the end of last year to have a little recap discussion about the future of Tumblr, where it's been in the past year, because it has a new owner. <gasps> and rumor has it that the, the, the crackdown on the adult stuff was shifted. And um, so that remains to be seen. Uh, in Instagram, we got 10 new followers. Hi, y'all. Uh, and 43 new Twitter followers. So little, little, little increases. We'll take, we'll take them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't need it all slammed at once, you know? Like you could just, just a little bit at a time, get used to it, get comfortable, mm -hmm. open up. Well, once we start wiggling, then you're good. Yeah. Uh, in YouTube, uh, we had 11,352 views. Ooh. We got 50 likes for the year. We got 2,600 comments. That would be two comma six zero zero. Wow. Y'all chatty bunch. Yay. Uh, that's just that. Uh, I'm wondering if some of those comments are, are dealing with the chats. I would, I would kind of say so, but a year ago we had like even more than that so i'm yeah. guessing that they're that they're combining the live and the post like yeah. stuff because mm -hmm. i know we certainly in month and reviews have not discussed 2600 things yeah, so. yeah yeah totally yeah uh and we got 32 new subscribers so yeah yeah welcome, welcome all y'all yeah that thing mm -hmm. um and speaking of the most popular videos on youtube <laughs> These are the things you liked. You really liked it. Um, or viewed it, at least. Yeah. So, uh, COL. So, here's the kicker. Uh, actually, this can't be right. Hold on. I just realized that that number isn't correct. Or that episode isn't correct. Because we didn't do that episode last year. <laughs> I think. I, I... Right? Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah, did somebody not put it? No, because I think you forgot to delete a line. What do you mean? Maybe? I don't know. Anyways. No, I'm looking at the numbers and I'm like, that can't be right because uh, go back to 2019. Thank you, great Google in the sky for all of your stuff. Mm -hmm. for posting that. Yeah, but see, Analytics. we didn't post that video in 2019. That's the right. issue. That's where I'm getting hung ah. So, fine. Everything's fine. How are you? Um, <laughs> so, COL408, the Would You Rather number five, hardest sex ever, 
had 296 views. Now, here's the thing, though. We didn't mm-hmm. post that video last year. We posted it three years ago, I want to say. Uh-huh. Uh, well, March, March 26, 2017. Okay. So, yeah, almost three years ago. Now, for last year's new content, the COL episode 501, let's talk about sex, bathhouse etiquette. That had 250 views. Hmm. Hmm. I see a theme. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, what's our most viewed ever, Gary? Uh, it's still episode uh, 280, which is Let's Talk About Sex Digital Release, with uh, over 4,000 views, 4,097 to be exactly. specific. And I'm pretty sure that was one of, it was not the very first, but it was one of the earlier episodes of Daddy Hadrian joining us before, well, back when he was Cub Hadrian or the Daddy Hadrian. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, then then the one right after it was uh, 233, depends on the sausage you eat, which was a Daddy Hadrian episode. So if our analytics are correct, <laughs> I mean, if we talk about sex and we bring Hadrian on, y'all just explode, right? <laughs> pretty. Team much, but to, to be Which fair, is, for for most views, these also had time to age, so they've been around a lot longer, so they had more yes. chance for viewing. So, True. to be fair, so if people are checking out our channel, and YouTube probably aggregating is showing them like the most popular videos, so therefore they're going to watch the most popular videos. True, true, true. Which keeps them to be the most popular videos. Yeah. Yep. Fair, yep. fair, fair. For Damon and I with uh, Cubs Out Loud Drag Race, uh, last year's new content, uh, All-Star Season 4, episode number 5, known as Roast in Peace, was the most uh, popular. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That episode. And our most viewed ever is All-Star Season 3, episode 3, The Bitchler, uh, with 627 total views. Yay. So something, something tells me the title is probably catching people. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, that's a thing. Meanwhile, based off of our numbers over uh, at uh, PodTrack, or or, or the way we uh, uh, track our download numbers for downloading the audio podcasts, uh, for last year, it was uh, episode 529 LTAS incels. Got 482 downloads. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it's uh, one of those things where it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so hat tip to Drew, because he was our guest on that episode and he had mentioned that tub- that topic. Yeah, that subject topic. Hi, vodka. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for the record. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I've had a bit of a weekend. I'm just gonna. Th- All right, here's here's the derail. It's not even the end of the episode. End of the month episode recap. Took Friday off from work. Went took my car to get inspected, and then they needed something done on the car. Not a big deal. But then something broke, and they had to get a part. And nobody in the county had the parts. So then I had to get a loaner for the weekend. That was the beginning of my weekend. So got it. And it's the end of my weekend, and I got to go to work tomorrow. So. Oh. Freaking your troubles away. So uh, yeah, uh, and, and I get I get the Grand lovely thing. Eight. I get the lovely thing of uh, going to work tonight, leaving work at seven, seven tomorrow morning, and then having to be back to work at six a.m. on Wednesday. <laughs> so mm. I don't even get a full two days. Wow. Anyways, yeah. So, yeah, I think uh, so. Drew had talked to me about incels and was kind of like, hey, um, had this experience might be interesting to have on the show. So it was it was a back burner kind of like, you know, it would to me. It's like if it if it becomes part of the pop culture, part of the zeitgeist, as the kids say. Mm -hmm. uh, Wow, I'm really owning my age this new year. Um, (laughs) No, you don't. Y'all don't understand. My best friend and I, we spent New Year's Eve together briefly and New Year's Day, and we talked so much about, like, over lunch, like, how we're getting old and everything is about our age now. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, like, so I was like, well, if it comes up, you know, it kind of percolates up and people start talking about incels again, like, we'll talk about it, like, bring it on. Or uh, as it turned out, it was like, oh, we can, we can, 
round over to talk about that subject. So y'all was interested. Almost 500 downloads. Mm, nice. Uh, also, uh, the overall, the most downloaded of all time since I started tracking through ProudTrack, uh, with 1,598 downloads, was episode 403, Mr. North American Bear Cub 2017. Hmm. Was uh, that? I wonder who that was. Huh. Someone who recently moved to Florida, I believe. Yeah. Mr. Hi, Timbers. Timbers. <laughs> <laughs> who uh, has been on a personal physical journey that is quite amazing and deserves all the recognition for. Fact. Fact. Big young boy, and he uh, was welcomed by the bear and leather kink communities, and he has been like shedding weight for quite a long time, and he now is focusing on muscle tone and gaining, like, like but filling he's, out. He's gaining muscle. Yeah. Yes. So and, he, uh, while the weight is more, it's not fat. Yeah. So. No, no, he's been doing, he's constantly been, like, pretty much every week, like, flashbacks, like, previous and, like, yeah. a year ago kind of stuff. And it's quite, quite uh, amazing. I'm really, really happy for him. So, Big boy yay. became skinny boy, became muscle boy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a muscle, he's a muscle bear cub pup now. It's just. He's looking good. I'm yeah. happy for him. Super happy for him. Yay. Yay. We love you, baby. Uh, for the DR side of things, uh, CLDR Season 11, Episode 5, Monster Ball was downloaded 109 times. Uh, I think most of our DR uh, 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 fans are viewers on YouTube than, more than they are uh, audio listeners. So. I could see that. That's fair. Um, I think that makes sense only because we're talking about a visual medium. We're talking mm -hmm. about a television show. Sure. So I think like people like i know that about me like uh i watched the mandalorian on disney plus and then i would go back and i would watch like the breakdowns and the recaps and the easter eggs and like you know so i have completely become absorbed in like part of the youtube culture of how like visual medium stuff is then like you return to it and that mm -hmm. kind of fun stuff. Mm -hmm. so so yeah uh, of all time, the most downloaded for with 506 downloads was uh, Season 9, Episode 13, Reunited. Mm. <laughs> Wait, was that the... Yeah, that was, wasn't it? What's that? No, it wasn't Vixen. That was... That was 10. Okay. And that, okay. that also featured uh, uh, Q... Oh. Uh, oh no! Comments from Q. Comments for Q. I should. Yes. Sorry, I'm sorry. Oh. I my statement. Cool. So, but here's here's my favorite. So, for for all those that you that don't know, I'm gonna pull the curtain back a little bit. Damon typically writes our synopsis. So, this is a synopsis of of CAL Drag Race season nine, episode thirteen, reunited. The girls are reunited, and it feels so shady. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, I, I, I think I even said it that way. Uh, uh, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Let's 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 do something. Let's let's uh -oh. do a little uh, uh, flash flashbackiness and actually uh, listen to the beginning of that episode. I'm gonna, I'm gonna click this button here. In this episode of COL Drag Race Tea Time, the girls are reunited and it feels so shady. The cast of season nine come together and spill all the oh tea. My. Listen I'm in as the Cubs rehash the, the reunion episode as we get one step closer to the finale. This tea is definitely going to taste the good. The Trinity, Eureka reading each other, Alexis's body issues, Fair calling Valentina out, Nina Bo, Nina Brown, <laughs> Shay and Sasha. <laughs> Charlie, Ooh, that was a, that, that's why that episode was popular. Uh, I didn't hit start sharing, so you guys didn't hear it, but uh, everybody else did. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. <laughs> no, that was my fault because I didn't hit well, start sharing. <laughs> we probably talked over you, which was not a just barely. So, cool. Uh, technical diff testicle difficulties. Anyways, moving on. Let's go into our uh, favorite episodes of uh, uh, 2019. 
Mine, I don't think is any surprise. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what the surprise is? That it's not also David's favorite episode. But, oh, that's right. Well, that's right. He wasn't there. He wasn't here. Yeah. Which probably means he didn't even listen to it or watch it. I'm just saying. So, CL 535, The Sander Fantasy. Yeah. Do I really need to see it anymore? Yeah. That was I'm my favorite so episode. Sock. We, we had, we have also one of my favorite guest hosts. Although, you know, like pretty much the favorite practically every single one. So, mm-hmm. but you just want to have sex with all of them. Of course. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new. Uh, uh, David, how about yes, you? No, I have not listened to that episode yet, but it is. I am actually going to at some point, just not right now. I haven't had a lot of time. With David's at old folks' home, mm-hmm. about three, about about twenty years, you'll finally. <laughs> I was going to say three years, and I'm like, no, he's still not going to have time at that point in time, but anyways. <laughs> Damon, how about you? What was your favorite episode of 2019? Um, my favorite episode was actually um, COL 503. Um, it was gaming characters. Um, we had Mr. Chris Diorio on the show and discuss something that I um, am a personal fan of. I love comic book characters and whatnot. So it was kind of a very interesting comp, um, show, in my personal opinion. I love the idea of that we did something that I know Gary is not 100% familiar with, but it was it was a good idea. And I like that we kind of went a different direction. So, Well, and I thought it was good that we... Like, I mean, I learned things from it. I mean, I mm-hmm. remember that episode specifically, not, yeah. not, you know, the details of it. But I remember thinking, like, I was asking questions. I was like, oh, and what about this? And how does that work? And there were concepts about, like, kind of time has changed, like, over the mm-hmm. decades about how gay characters were portrayed. Um, and gay being, like, an umbrella broad term for, like, all the mm-hmm. type of different characters that are out there. And whether it was about, like, video games versus role play versus, you know other stuff board game da, da, da. so yeah yeah it was a good episode for sure yeah. yep uh i chose episode cwl 514 which was transfer listener because i believe this is one of the first times in the history of the podcast that we had somebody who interacted with us specifically via email and kind of commented and we had a dialogue going back and forth, like in a written mm-hmm. format. And then they were like, hey, you know what? Uh, I think I'd like to come on. Like, yeah. I've, I've, I'm aware of the show enough. And I understand what you guys try to do, like in terms of like the, the topics and the focus. And I'm game to come on and, and help answer questions and discuss stuff. So, yeah, uh, I thought that was pretty awesome. So, having TV on. Yeah. yeah. So I linked uh, YouTube or blog. doesn't matter. Um, for those that, that want it. So it was, it was pretty cool to have TV on. And, um, it's, it was an episode that was a long time coming. It was one that like had been on the docket, so to speak. Uh, we usually have ideas of things that we want to talk about. And sometimes they, it's about when they present themselves, like as an example, the prep episode, the LTAS prep with Mario and, and, uh, Kenny, mm-hmm. I wanted to do that for shit year and a half, mm-hmm. maybe two, like, but like I said in that episode, I just didn't want us to talk about it like we didn't really mm-hmm. know what we were talking about. Yeah. I mean, you can do some personal education, but I really kind of wanted to – when we have those, we try to have a guest on who – I don't want to say it has credentials, but at least can make it seem more open as far as the discussion goes. Like Chris Diorio talking about gaming. He worked in the gaming industry, literally. Mm-hmm. Um, so – We need that you know, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think they, they, they can add another lens shade to the discussion. So I think that that's really important. And uh, we actually have currently an email suggestion that was sent to us by uh, a listener audience member that uh, I'm interested to discuss further um, to look about having online. And I'm cool with, you know, people 
making suggestions about stuff. I mean, yes, I did seal. I seal. Wow. Hi. I did see in the chat uh, the discussion about, you know, give them what they want <clears throat> based on the statistics. So it's kind of <laughs> obvious that sex catches the attention. Sex sells. Um, you know. Or in our case, uh, gets us views because we not we don't really get any revenue from YouTube. You know? sure. <laughs> it's, we're not that big uh, in for, terms of population and audience. And then what cracks me up more than anything is like if we use – oh, yeah, by the way, just so you all know, another peek behind the curtain. So when we do the what's going on, and it used to be I'll tumble for you because it was about Tumblr, and then we switched it to Twitter. So it's a little like uh, – you know what is it? Rock and Robin? Mm -hmm. That little snippet. This last time got hit for a Creative Commons license. Oh like, no, no, no! This, right. this this was the second time. Oh, but it cracked me up to know it. I was like, for real. Mm -hmm. I was like, we've been doing that for what, like months and months and months, and then all of a sudden we got hit with it. And I was like, oh, okay. So YouTube sends us this email, and it's like, if there's any ad revenue, blah blah blah, blah. and I'm like, <laughs> Go back with that. <laughs> we never got any. Yeah, <laughs> even before and, you took it away from us. Yeah. Fuck with that. Have fun with that. Yeah. Very, very silly. So, so that was my favorite episode of 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, next subject is things you'll remember most about 2019. Uh, my, my sister got married. Oh. I went out to, to Minnesota for a week. I'll remember parts of that because yeah. there's a picture of you and your, your cousins and stuff and you have that one cousin of yours that is Daddy Bear. Damn, mm -hmm. man. What? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I don't care. What? He's it hot. Really what picture. can you say? <laughs> it was a really good picture and they were all in suits and it, it, yeah, so shut up. It, it hey, was wait, button, hey. button, 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 button. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. All right, all right. So this is all right, I'm gonna ask this question then. Is this the infamous cousin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was the infamous cousin. That but he those said that... that don't know what we're talking about, you're gonna have to go back and listen to the back catalog. Yeah. Because it's been at least a dozen times, if not two dozen times, it has been discussed in random little sprinklings here and there. <laughs> about Jeff's infamous cousin. My, hot daddy cousin. My my one gay cousin. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, I, sh I and I shared a picture of uh, me, him, and uh, one of my other cousins who we've always been uh, deemed as almost like lookalikes, practically. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, that third cousin didn't have his beard this time. So, with mm -hmm. that, with the lack of a beard, it, he doesn't look as much like us. But when he has a beard, we very much look related. Right. So. Yeah. But it was, I'm glad you went to, to, it was a really good thing that you went to Minnesota and you got to see your family and your sister and everything. Cause I, I mean, I really did like that. And that you were, had that a listener up. and uh, my former roommate. Yeah. Yeah. You got to meet one of the listeners too. Wait, wait, wait. Point of clarification the listener is not the former roommate. They're two separate no, people. No, no, two separate people. Right, right, right. Okay. Because the way you said it, I was like, "Wait, who's the former roommate?" That is, like, it was, was it was it was a listener, uh -huh. comma, and former roommate. So two separate things. Oxford, comma. I don't know why something like that. But there was a series of people, not one person with two descriptions. Mm. <laughs> you a series of people. Because mm. I, I don't I don't think uh, uh, Keith listens to the show, but. Your former roommate is Keith. Yes. Boom. Got it. Gotcha. Nice. Yay. So I had so some Dave, fun time while I was up there. Go ahead, Jeff, if you're good. Oh, I'm sorry. I had some fun time while I was up there, so. Yes. Yes, you did. Rumor has it. <laughs> Just saying. What rumor? David? <laughs> Look well, at no, the I telegram I chat. I <laughs> well, I don't think 
I don't think all the dirty laundry was aired on the Telegram chat. I mean, obviously not, but enough was given. Mm hmm. Yeah, so. Anyways, moving on. Damon? <laughs> What's the thing that you'll remember about 2019? <laughs> um. Well, actually, I, I, I wrote one thing, but I think I'm going to write two things. Sorry, folks. That's right. um, You're allowed to have two at the same time. Don't nobody tell you that you can't do that. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. But it's record. things, so there's plural. Yeah, so um, the first one is kind of the difficult one. It was the um, hospital stay and, and whatnot. Um with the bout of diverticulitis that happened to me back in April um, that occurred. And gosh, I was in the hospital for several days, a few days, one, I think four, four days. And, you know, but just dealing with that and being in a hospital and, and, you know, um, thank heavens for our insurance and all that fun stuff. But, um, you know, I've been, it's made me realize, you know, I'm turning, I've turned 40, so I should probably start making some focuses on my personal health. So, um, that, and that was kind of, I think the wake up call I needed. Granted, it wasn't a like potentially, well, it was potentially life threatening, potentially, you know, awful, awful life deter mm -hmm. dis dis destructive thing, but it was um, something that I need have to now focus on forever so that I do not have a reoccurrence. Um, so there's that. Um, it's funny because around that time, we were actually preparing for the Cincinnati Puppy Contest. Um, so that's my other thing that I'll remember the most from 2019. Um, I put myself out there officially, or not officially, but like in a contest format, which, you know, you're getting judged, you go on stage, you show your best self. Um, and I made third place, so yay! Um, so yeah, I was I was very happy with that. And since then, some things have um, gone into motion, and I'm really happy with my place in the community that I feel was had always been there, but I feel kind of like was solidified based on you know in my interactions and involvement in the contest. So. Um, I remember that mostly and the people that I met through that contest, I think I have some really awesome friends for life um, that I'm kind of cool. They're all really fun. So, yeah. Yeah. Good deal. Gary. So, uh, yeah, 2019. Mm. Mm, girl. Yeah. End of a decade. Um. So, and I will probably in the coming year talk more openly about some things. Mm -hmm. uh, 2019 was a life recovery year for me. Mm -hmm. So, uh, flashback. Uh, end of 2017, I had been um, part of a, a very significant layoff from my prior employer. And 2018... Uh, yeah, I would, I'm going to own it. I went into like a big depression and kind of wallowed around in my own self misery and a whole bunch of shit. So this past year, 2019 was like in a way crawling out of that and mm -hmm. like reevaluating self-worth in terms of like the workplace and, you know, my abilities and that kind of stuff. So, um, and, and learning new stuff, like, you know, going into work as opposed to working from home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and reporting to people when you used to not have to report to anybody, really, because you were independent. Uh, <laughs> it's been a journey, let me tell you. And um, the other big thing amongst all of that was my mom's passing. Mm -hmm. um, it was sudden. At the time, um, I didn't feel that it was sudden. But now that I've got distance from it, it definitively was like for the whole world outside of me, it was unexpected and it happened and everybody was kind of like, wait, whoa, what? Oh, like, and they had to, and they had to deal with it and process it. And a lot of focus was put on me during that time, but I compartmentalized the shit out of it because she passed away the Saturday right before drenched fur. 
And so, like, I, I got, I got this thing. I got, I got people coming. I got a committee. Like, I got, I got stuff I'm trying to do. Like, so there was, there was a lot on my plate. And so, um, it's still a thing, like, and it will be for a while. But, um, yeah. So, like, that's that's the big highlights for me personally is that I was trying to, <laughs> as I used to say all the time, get my shit together. Mm-hmm. And also deal with becoming part of the club I didn't know kind of existed, which is the No no More Mama Club. Um, Ray, who has been on the show several times, um, he lost his mom a couple months mm-hmm. before I did. Um, and there have been some others that are people that I know who have lost a parent. Um, there was a couple of us, a handful of us that lost our mom last year. It was very... A unique and odd and a weird kind of like bonding thing in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like those, those are some things that really kind of stood out. And that's now significantly why I talk a lot about my dad and I spend time. His, his health has been changing. It has been uh, going in the direction that was expected. He has Parkinson's. And so I'm seeing him every single day and spending time with him, you know, a little bit of caretaking. Uh, yesterday was very trying. Um, but <laughs> love him dearly, but there's a big difference between like an hour or less a day as opposed to a whole day. Cause we did a lot of stuff yesterday, mm-hmm. so. but, um, no. And, and you know, it's the preparation of the things to come, mm-hmm. uh, and what's all involved in that. So, um, and the importance of family and friends. And I did not really do any traveling at all last year. I mean, finances were a big thing, um, but also like time and responsibilities change that scope. Um, and I'm looking forward to 2020 uh, being different, which gets us into our next area. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I will admit, I don't really have anything I'm specifically looking forward to. Like, it's not that I'm not looking forward to something, it's more of. I don't have anything solid to really look forward to. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Because so, you listed something. And so big... when I, th- yeah, when I, th- <laughs> when I thought about it, I'm like, oh, well, there's nothing I'm really looking forward to. And then I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It's 2020. It's a presidential election year. <laughs> Which means I'm looking forward to voting out that fucker known as Trump. <laughs> Nope, I'm not even going to make that a hashtag because I don't even want that anywhere near. I don't want some. I don't want some motherfucker to search for this episode, like searching around the internet and find this episode. Because no, I'm not having that. We are not having that. Optim- optimizing SEO for those people we want to make sure do see it, not those who don't. Exactly. We aren't here for hate. But I will like 100% totes agree with you. That will be something I will be like, I will probably be here after voting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, but, but think about it. What does it say if the only thing I'm really actually looking forward to something to do is, is to vote? Don't get me wrong. Very important. You really sh- should be doing each time, even though I have issues with voting for reasons but um uh for other things not presidential the president is really the only one that i can ever really solidly vote for because i get the information but all the other voting practically everything else i it it's hard to really get the information and like like it's not always out there it's not prominent mm-hmm. enough for me to really understand yeah. so when i go to vote everything else on that list is going to be one i'm probably just going to vote party line just because it's simple <laughs> and then all the ones which i need to individually do i'm just picking one which makes me feel bad about those votes because because I, mean, I might not actually be voting for the one that I want, but because they're so not prominent and not out there that you have to 
really actively search for the information you need and then have to it's a lot of work for voting which i think is probably one of the problems with with uh, uh our our uh, our voter turnout uh is just because of um just because there's people people aren't actively looking for it they're focused on uh, so many other things that they don't want to take hours and hours to figure out who's on the ballot what are their views blah 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 blah. i'm not much into politics so i don't understand some a lot of this shit and it, it's just so much time and effort to do it that mm-hmm. But that's one of the reasons why voter turnout isn't that great. And then also people's like, I have to go to work and I, I can't take off of work because I'm trying to I'm living paycheck to paycheck or something like that. Right. Just because of all these difficulties with going to vote, figuring out what they really want to vote for is what Trump. But when it comes to like the president, that's a no brainer because it is everywhere. You get a lot more information. You, it's 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 like this this huge spotlight, so it's a lot easier to vote for president than it is anything else. But that's it. There is nothing, not even personal life, that I can think of that I'm really looking forward to. There's nothing that I'm like not looking forward to. Like I'm not looking forward to this, that, or the other. It's just there's nothing to look forward to or not look forward to. So my life is boring. <laughs> well, to be fair, it's what it's what you're looking forward to in 2020. It wasn't necessarily like personal resolutions or goals. I know, mm-hmm. I know, but but then you look at what you guys are. Uh, I don't know if it's just because I took yours, but. Um, you two have something that you're looking forward to that's not just voting out Trump. Well, I think we've been through some things. Like, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. Like, <laughs> yeah, I suppose. That have had a deeper impact on our lives. I guess I'll put it that way. Okay. I mean, technically, this is not what I'm looking forward to in 2020, but I could list like getting laid more. I mean, my father said that to me yesterday because I got really cranky towards the end of the day. And he was like, you know what you need? You need to get some. And I was like, excuse me? I was like, my father, my father just called me out. <laughs> Anyways, Damon. And, he, and, and I mean, I've been, mind you, I've been out since I was in college. Like, which is very odd in a in a reality kind of sense because I've been out like nearly half my life now. Well, okay, I've been out more than half my life out to my parents, roughly uh, half my life or so. So, because I had to look at my college transcripts recently. <laughs> Anyways, that's interesting. And um, yeah, so the yeah. fact that my my senior citizen uh, disabled father calls me out and says like, <laughs> "You need to get some," I was like. Girl, I, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm shocked. I'm well, shocked. No, no, no. so like anybody who's met my father and knows his personality would not be shocked by this. People that don't know him <laughs> and his personality, and if you're like comparing my father to your father, please don't do that. Please, 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 please. <laughs> with the love of everything, I'm begging you, don't do that because they're not the same <laughs> by, by any measure. Because when he was when he was made, they done broke the mold and they like passed laws to prevent that from happening. Again. Like not just gonna happen. Not made again. One in a gazillion, and that's just the way it is. Cool. And Philip, you're not helping. <laughs> so yeah, like so, my dad called that out like yesterday, and I, there was a part of me that was like, well, I guess I could make that a New Year's resolution. I mean, I, that means I have to <laughs> make myself more available to it. Which I mean, you know, I mental mean, mental health may, is maybe a real... something like once a month, at least. <laughs> Shit, I wasn't getting once a month before last this past anyway, year. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> you know anyway. what? Two of us on this podcast are not in a committed relationship, living with a partner. So, 
Just Fair. say it. Uh huh. Fair. Fair. That being said, uh, David, what are you looking forward to? <laughs> <laughs> getting so laid I, more. <laughs> getting laid. So, <laughs> no reality. Um, being at it is, as I said, um, twenty twenty or twenty nineteen was a wake up call health ways for me. Um, and since I've been going to a doctor regularly, I've learned some stuff. Um, I think I've talked about it on the show. Um, I'm pre diabetic. Um, I have high blood pressure. Um, I have diverticulitis. I have Bell's palsy, which was a thing for a few years ago. Um, and um, what else? Um, yeah. So there's all these things. I have a heart issue, potentially. So there's all these stuff. So my idea for 2020 is to focus on getting healthier um, what, what, and what that may mean overall. And I think also I'm going to throw um, – I want to – also be healthier mentally. I don't know. I'm not having, I'm not saying I'm having like mental issues per se, and I'm not you know, prescribed or, just, you know, diagnosed with anything mentally, but work has been stressful and crazy. I've talked about that before. And I want to find some way to stabilize that because it, it's, it's getting to me. And I'm sure it's, you know, People can understand that sometimes it just gets a little woo, messed up. And um, so health for me, I think, is a multi th- uh, multi-faceted thing. Okay. And my hope is to work on some of these things in the near future. I don't know if I'll be able to do much, um, but I'm going to try. Hence what I'm trying to look for forward to in 2020 i want to try to get healthier so that you know um 2020 will be an interesting year for me it is it'll be five years living in this house um which is a milestone for many people um um and it'll also mean certain things will probably change in regards to um the house situation like for most people if you don't know they say usually in your first five, 10 years when you're paying mortgage on a house, you're basically paying the interest. Mm. So like, yeah. so, portion. yeah, so that's, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I've been paying, you know, the mortgage every year, every, every month, what have you, but you've paid, so hopefully things will shift. And um, I'm, I am also, I didn't mention this on there, I'm looking forward to Gala 2020. Uh, I will write that because it is um, I've been to it's a it's a fun time around a bunch of people that are, I would say, like me in a sense. You know, it's men and women um, who sing in choruses and love doing it and watching them put on their their stuff, whether good or bad who never knows you never know but like put on her stuff and getting that support and love and and like applause praise from um your fellow musicians as it were is so uplifting um and also it's a big festival where a whole bunch of like you know gay people are together so yeah might be getting laid (laughs) (laughs) there might be some fun just there, saying, there will there there usually is fun. Like this is the way I look at it. If you go to gala and you don't get laid, that's probably your fault. And I don't even know no, much about gala, but the fact that there are hundreds to thousands of gay people congregating at one place at one time, people getting on. laid. Yeah, it's it'll. Ha- it, I'm not. I'm. I'm not gonna like say that it won't happen because I'm pretty sure it will. Oh please. <laughs> Like, you know the bathhouse is going to be very popular during that time. And oh if you're at a bathhouse, open one up. You will be an instant millionaire that weekend. Just say it. Where's Gala this year? What city? Minneapolis. Oh, yeah. This, there's definitely got to be. Like, I don't think yeah. this is really whole. Oh, yeah. I'm not aware of a bathhouse right. in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. I might be able to. Oh, I could probably see some people I know. There's a couple of friends of mine on Facebook that I could, you know, actually finally meet. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. There's at least one face in that area. Huh? Just, just Facebook? 
Yes. I mean, right now, just Facebook in my head and I'm talking about it. Yes. I'm sure there are others maybe on Tumblr or Twitter. Uh-huh. Uh, Telegram? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Perhaps, perhaps the co-host could make a recommendation or two. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> maybe they have some experience, some suggestions. <laughs> Maybe somebody's <laughs> trying to punch their card. <laughs> I can't saying. with y'all. <laughs> I can't. That said, it. what am I looking forward to in 2020? Hmm. Yeah, Gary. Being saltier. Uh, <laughs> is that what this is? Is that what this is my beard? <laughs> Where's that shape band? Saltiness spreading. I don't and have I one. Saltier, Thank you. Is that what that is? Do you know what? Somebody made a comment recently, and I don't know how I feel about this. They were like, oh, look at you with like all your brown hair. You were younger. I was like, what? Rude. Jade. Think I'm going to share my DNA with you. You've got another thing coming, and it ain't me. So, uh, <laughs> 2020, new opportunities and personal growth is what I wrote. And so here's the thing. Um, at the end of the month... <laughs> Here's here's my here's my vague. Well, I can't call it vague booking because it's not Facebook. Here's my vague YouTubing. Here's my vague. Here's my vague tubing. That's not You're even being vague. You're being vague. Yeah. At the end of the month, I will make an announcement about some stuff. But I'm looking forward to some things uh, that are coming up this year. And uh, it's kind of renewed some things within me, like in terms of like my my personal motivations and energy and worth in a way. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And, you know, the personal growth is like, Damon, you were talking about, like, I have a really good opportunity for uh, approaching and working on a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. uh, mental health is a big one. I've always been an advocate of mental health, like, and, and taking care of it. When I was in college, uh, I went to therapy and it was profoundly helpful. It was like part of my coming out phase and that kind of stuff. And then um, I took a bunch of psych classes in college, so I <laughs> some things. And now that I'm, you know, mid forties, I'm kind of like, yeah, but you don't know everything. You, you need to, you need to work through some stuff. You got to figure out some stuff. And to be fair, I have had two significant life events happen in about what 14, 15 months, uh, and clinically. I've never been diagnosed for OCD, but probably have a touch of that. And the life events were enough that they, in some ways, could be considered uh, traumatic events mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between a job loss and a loss of a, a loved one, a parent. So, yeah, that like can really kind of twist you up in ways. Even if even if you think you you're on top of it and you got it all, um, it's something I've tried explaining last year to people. Um, when they would ask questions about certain things, that would be like, just because you think somebody has it all figured out does not mean that they do. Like, this is the thing that, like, I've said this many times to, to partners. Um, while you may be with somebody for a very long time, you do not know that other person 100%. You Fact. think you do. But what you know is what they present to you. You are not literally in their head. Mm -hmm. So... When strife comes up, when challenges come up, you know, that that's where this is coming from, is that you do not know everything. And, you know, it would be best in a way, probably for all parties, if you would take a moment to be humble and be like, you know what, I really don't know. Like, I think I know you, but obviously I don't. Or I don't understand this thing. And move through that, you know, and, and work through it. But it's very difficult for people because they think, like, you know, how you present yourself is a thing. And it's like, yeah, but the whole world, like... Damon, you know this, like, you know, RuPaul is famous for saying, you know, we're born naked and the rest is drag. Like how you present yourself to the world is how people see you and what they do. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that gets confusing for people because they feel that, you know, because a person looks like they got it all together and that kind of stuff. And it's like, be very careful about that, especially when it leads to like people putting people on pedestals, like looking up to somebody and being like, oh, you know, they've got it all together. Their professional life and the blah, 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 blah. You know, it's like, mm, maybe. Yeah. I'm not saying it's not possible, but, you know, even Tony Robbins as a, like, self-motivated guru, he has even been like, I am not perfect. And I think people 
find that difficult because we're always like part of our goal in striving acceptance and love is to be like looking for who we can emulate like who can teach us who can like let us be a part of that or have a taste of that and that's fine but the reality is like you know all the seconds of the day all the minutes all the hours all the days all the years it is not perfect all the time and i think we're moving into a new phase as a greater society which i am perfectly fine with that people are being more authentic and more open and owning their stuff i took my car in to have it like inspected on friday and i had this older generation of people who mostly were in the, the waiting room having random conversations around me and i was listening to people who are like the generation older than me like my parents age or even older than that talking about these new kids and their technology and the fan dangled thing and the da 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 da, da. and i heard a, a very interesting conversation about how Kids are identifying themselves at a younger and younger age. And so this woman who is probably old enough to be my grandmother is talking about how she's glad that she doesn't live near the family where she has, I think, probably a great grandchild that has identified themselves in a gender other than one that was presumed at birth and how that's like difficult for her. Mm -hmm. And I kept I kept in my business because this is not the place. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not about to like get involved, but I made note of it and I was like, this is happening. It is out there. People are feeling very impassioned and you know and owning stuff and saying, This is my truth, this is who I am, and it's mm -hmm. gonna have effects and it's gonna change things. You know, it's like I remember my mom and I when I was in college, we talked and she specifically said in one of our many journeys driving back and forth to college, because I lived about two, two and a half hours away. Um, so it was, you know, around the holidays and then breaks, she said, you know, do you think you'll ever see, do you think in your lifetime you'll ever see gay marriage? And I said, probably. I said, but it takes time. I said, no offense, people got to die. And then she kind of looked at me sideways, but kept her eyes on the road. And I said, <laughs> and I said, we need older generations to, to go away. I said, we need, we need the ideals, the concepts of a different time of one man, one woman, pick a fence, da da da. Like we need that to be dissolving. We need it to go away for people to be more open to other concepts. And so the fact that, you know, marriage passed and marriage equality came about in the US, that was one thing my mom said to me when it happened. She said, I just can't believe it happened. She said, I know it happened, but I'm still in disbelief because she thought it would not happen in her lifetime. She, mm -hmm. in that conversation, she said, I thought it would happen for you. I didn't think I would be around to see it. So, I think that's that's what we're always looking at and the things that we're kind of looking at is how that stuff happens. So I think, you know, for all of us, we're looking for change. Jeff's mm -hmm. looking for the person who's in charge of our politics currently to go away. Get that back out. And, and yeah. And we and I mean you know, technically we wouldn't get out until twenty twenty one at the at the earliest. So but okay. the <laughs> vote happens before then. <laughs> That's uh, okay. Something could potentially cute. happen beforehand that could get him out. Just saying. Uh, I thought the impeachment trial uh, yeah. stuff was already happened. So just like um, President Clinton was was impeached but not kicked out of office, same thing. Yeah, Trump. right. He was not tried. So, or he was tried, but he was anyways. Long story. The US politics aside, I mean, there's there's just like that kind of stuff. I think it's coming, and so um, you know, this year. Um, for me, I think, and, and for all of us is about, you know, what, what we can learn and, and what comes about from that, you know? So enough of the soapbox. Woo. I'm almost out of my drink. That was, <laughs> uh, anything else, gentlemen? Any final thoughts, anyone? Final thoughts in 2019. I think uh, I'll say this. I think for everyone, especially in the United States, 2019 was a very odd complex year yeah. um i mean we've been dealing with some stuff for a few years now but i think 2019 became a very weird comp like i use the word complex because we all had these things that we had now like mentally i think think about you know um i think a lot of us were very much on edge in some ways, and I think sometimes that affects how we react and how we um, um, approach certain things. Um, I have been noticing as I've been watching my you know, friends who are posting things about 2019 and their 2020s, a lot of them are looking forward to moving forward, if that makes sense. Um, and I, I kind of am on an, in an agreement on that. And however you choose to move forward, whether that's um, 
you know, believing in like something will eventually be taking leaving indefinite, you know, the position for a while, or um, if you, you know, go out and you know vote, or you're like me and you're looking to like make yourself healthier so that you can literally move forward, you know, in years, um, what have you, you know, I think that's a good thing to like think about and focus on. Um, what can you do to move yourself forward and maybe move others? Um, yeah, my, you know, biggest thing has often been like, I, you know, we try to think about those who, whose voices sometimes aren't heard. Mm -hmm. And if we can do those small things to make those voices a little bit louder, that I think that's something that'll make things a lot more interesting for this next year. This will be a very, I think this will be a very interesting year, 2020. Um, I, I don't know what all that will entail <laughs> yet, but it will be interesting. I think for all of us. Um, so, you know, I keep your eyes and ears open and listen, um, listen more. If that may not, not to us, but just like, listen more. Well, listen, listen to, to us question. too, but I mean, yes, yes, of course. Like, obviously like, please, <laughs> don't leave listen. us out. <laughs> yeah. Listen to us. Sure. Definitely. Please make those please. numbers increase, <laughs> <laughs> but listen to each other more and take some time before you make some decisions. Yeah, that's all. I will say this. The world will be a much better place if we just have more orgasms. <laughs> Especially with each other. Just for the record. <laughs> even if you even if you solo, the more orgasms you have, the more like release of, of good chemicals in the body and, you know, Unless you take it to a, too far and extreme, then you become a, a, a bait and addict. Be careful, <laughs> you know. But then, Depends like, you're the probably day. a better person. You're better to get along with. You're nicer to your coworkers, you know. You know, and if you and if you're nicer to your coworkers, then hopefully, like, that lightens their mood a little bit. And if you're sharing the DNA with other people, like, then both you mutually have a better time, and then that makes the world a better place. So that's my recommendation for 2020: get played more. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I don't know how successful I'm going to be, but we'll see. Woo! Gary says, Gary's slogan for 2020 is get laid more. <laughs> and mm. as they say on uh, 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 Tox Machina at the end, uh, don't forget to love each other. Aww. Yeah. And that love could be physical. DNA swapping. And, yeah. Yeah. It, so it's, or inserting. Yeah, you know, or receiving. Yeah, are yeah. just swap. Our, anyway, like and, anyway. and and even those who you wouldn't necessarily do that to for various reasons, you know, just you know, love them friendly, like less sexually, too. So just, just all you need is love. Anyways, <laughs> Philip says what? make that make that a hashtag. Make what a hashtag? All you need is love. Get <laughs> more. Okay. It is oh, new, ca new, ca new campaign. Uh, get laid. Uh, hashtag Ooh, get laid. New more. shirt. Ooh. Oh. I gotta tell. I gotta tell y'all something in the post show. Let's wrap up. Okay. So, anyways, guess what, folks? That's the end. Uh, first show, twenty twenty, in the can. Uh, there's plenty of ways to contact us. Let us know what your memories of twenty nineteen was uh, at. Uh, our website, CubsOutLoud.com, where you can leave a comment on the blog. Shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 Talk. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can find us on various social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you can join our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. You can subscribe to our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col you can find uh, some various merchandise such as this none that we're sticky here's a cookie shirt uh is anybody else wearing something i didn't check nope 
Not well, today. Gary has the hat. Oh, Gary has that. Ow. Okay, so, plenty of things. Uh, and I've been flashing the mug, uh, a mug, uh, a couple times mm-hmm. today. Um, at zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, do keep, I keep forgetting to mention this, but it's not just zazzle.com. There are also zazzle.co.uk and such. Um, you can go to slash comes out loud in the appropriate place of the uh, URL or go to zazzle.com, scroll down to the bottom and change your localization. Um, and just have slash comes out loud at the appropriate place. So we're international that way um you can subscribe also become a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud we appreciate you very much one of the things from this last year didn't mention new computer for me and it's all thanks to you patrons for helping us out on that yeah uh also you can uh rate us on apple Podcasts, subscribe to us on google play Podcasts, and uh spotify you find me anywhere in the internet as box set box puppy box cub box something or other um if you wish to get in contact with me you can find me as theater cub 79 on most bear related sites or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter if you would like to find me anywhere online and get in touch with me i can pretty much find me as gare bear 73 if you're going to follow me on twitter for the naughty stuff that i repost uh it's g-a-r-b-e-a-r-7-3 x-x-x Send me a message. Let me know that you're not a bot, because otherwise I don't know. Just saying. Yeah. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, y'all. Happy New Year. Speaking of those journals, be right back. So Damon runs the way when I wanted to say something, so I gotta wait for him to come back. Cause that's dang. Well, after uh, being at the computer chatting for an hour and drinking. Was was the vodka even a good idea? <laughs> I think it was. I feel better now. Oh, that's good. Because, you know. Um, <laughs> Philip, I noticed about two minutes in. Rude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you were the one who brought it up. No, it's a, it's a tell. It, my dad has it, and I have the same thing. So, what now? No one, I said in the, in the chat, on, I said, if y'all see how red my cheeks got, that's a clue that I've been drinking alcohol. Then Philip said, I noticed about two minutes in. And I was like, rude. <laughs> um, but it's true. I get it from my dad. It's genetic. It's a, it's a tell. Like, usually, like, if I've, if I've been having alcohol, like, my face gets flush. So there's no oh. hiding it. Like, my dad would come home from being out with his buddies or whatever. Not that he was a big drinker, but he would come home and my mother would be like, you were drinking. He's like, how do you even know? Cause he wouldn't say anything. And she would mm-hmm. just know. And he found out us cause he's, he's like, you know, Rudolph, he gives it away. His face gets flush. So there's no way to like kind of hide it. So, hey. all right. So here's a cute, we're like, still alive. Oh, so I know here's a cute okay. show thing that I want to tell you guys. Yeah. Uh, so yesterday, my dad and I went to visit my grandparents, his parents. I did not think about the fact that I was wearing a Cubs Out Loud sweatshirt. So we get there, and my grandmother says out loud, consent is my foreplay. She read my sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs>
out loud at the kitchen table. So you you weren't just wearing a comes out loud sweatshirt. You were wearing your consent to my foreplay sweatshirt. Oh yes, oh yes. And I was like, well, too late now. Like, I mean, like, <laughs> like, too, like you can't put the jacket on, you know, to try to cover it up like, or anything. Whoopsie. Sorry, you weren't supposed to see that. Well, no, like I'm not embarrassed about it, but I hadn't thought about it. Like I hadn't predicted in the course of the day that I was going to be places for people to see stuff. Like today. The T-shirt that I had on that had the word the F word on it, I was very aware of that I would not be like flashing that to the public. Mm. So I had like another shirt over top of it, you know, things like that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I was highly amused. But it was funny because we were talking about like our merch and hats and like creating a, maybe a new shirt with hashtag twenty twenty get laid more. Um, I was like, oh yeah, that reminds me because we had a sweat because we have a design I had a sweatshirt, um, and I was like. Okay. I mean, granted, right. my grandmother's birthday, not that she'll ever hear this or see it or anything. My grandmother's yeah. birthday, it's tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It's, she's going to be 87. Aww. So the fact that she <laughs> read my sweatshirt out loud. <laughs> well, at least it was that sweatshirt and not like the hashtag 2020 get late more sweatshirt or the sloppy bottom 2020. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I was busy see y'all like went straight to the sloppy bottom shirt and instead I was busy thinking about the now that we're sticky here's your cookie that ah, that I'm wearing apparently fluids uh yeah it, it's cream uh huh it's icing mm-hmm because sure. who who doesn't want to put icing on a chocolate chip cookie and they're not chocolate chips it's oatmeal raisin <laughs> you, you keep telling yourself that girl. <laughs> Uh huh. That's the same thing. Don't That's get me same. wrong. I love oatmeal raisin cookies, but uh, uh, not I love oatmeal raisin cookies. Actually, not the not actually cookie. No, no. Nay. Oatmeal you? raisin. I love them. Anyway, oh, so here's it, the thing. <laughs> the reason I have trust issues is because of oatmeal raisin cookies. <laughs> <laughs> right now, fuckers what? look like chocolate chip cookies, not a chocolate chip cookie. Well, they don't look like chocolate chip cookies. When you are at work and somebody brings in a damn cookie tray and they don't label shit and they don't tell you what it is and you're trying to find something and you're like, oh, that looks like a chocolate chip cookie. And then you're like, nope, that ain't <laughs> chips. That was raisins. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I actually prefer oatmeal raisins yeah, over chocolate chip cookies. But beside that point, oatmeal raisins uh, cookies, because of the oatmeal... They look different than because I don't know of oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. I'm not aware are, of these. I have not seen them. I'm I've sure had them. you can do it. They're you really can do good. It, I'm sure it's that's a, like true versicles. They're unicorns. They exist out there in the wild. <laughs> you just have to find them. <laughs> oh no, chocolate chip cookies first. True versicles. <laughs> Come on. I'm just saying. But if they're oatmeal and there's something something in them that looks like it could possibly be chocolate chips, well, most like, likely they're raisins. If you're like a former coworker, and I don't even know who she was, she didn't like if she liked the, the taste of something, but didn't like the consistency, she would grind it up. Like the infamous, she put walnuts in her chocolate chip cookies, so she likes the taste of walnuts, but she doesn't like chewing them. And then she offers a chocolate chip cookie to one of my best friends who is allergic to walnuts. <laughs> and my friend said, are there any nuts in it? No. And then my friend eats the cookie. And about five minutes later, is like, my throat is closing because I'm having an allergic reaction. And then comes five minutes later. You got any better drill? And I was like, what'd you eat? Because I know exactly how this routine works. <laughs> And she said, I ate a goddamn cookie. (laughs) And I was like, proves you right. She said, she told me there were no nuts in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, did you ask her afterwards? She's like, I just did. Oh, I grind up the walnuts. I don't like it. I like the taste, but I don't like that. I was like, did you kill her yet? She's like, no, because that's against company policy. (laughs) Drill. It's against company policy. (laughs) And I went, maybe later. (laughs) <laughs> can't even do it in a park lot because there's a camera <laughs> but can't have to be after work but then no, it was and that's wrong and luckily, 
her her uh, allergic reaction is not like instant anaphylactic shock, but mm-hmm. can be a problem. Like, cause she's it, like, "What's I feel my throat get itchy and it starts to swell up a little bit." Like, that's a problem. Yeah, so, I'm not a fan yeah. of nuts and cookies personally. So, well, you know, every everybody wants wants something different. You know, whether the that's nuts, the thing. I know? just like cookies. I don't give a fuck. Oh, speaking of which, guess what, bitches? <laughs> oh, someone got. Girl, Girl Scout, Scout cookies. cookies. I warned y'all, motherfuckers. All right, so here's the d- real deal on the. And post you got do si dos. You don't have peanut butter patties. Yeah. <laughs> now pass. <laughs> I, already, I already swallowed the Jason Momoas. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that are listening, it's the Samoas. But anyways, <laughs> no. So i <I'm> warning <laughs> y'all. We're in mortal danger. 2020 is the year we're gonna die because. Girl Scouts now have what's called a digital cookie, and you could order the shit online, and it gets shipped to you. H and I did it to support. Oh, I didn't talk about that in the show, but uh, anyways, on my Facebook, I had posted Tom and Tom, who have been on our show years ago as gay dads. We did Father's Day show. Mm-hmm. They got two kids they adopted. Anne is part of Girl Scouts, and they posted like if you wanted to support her, that you could order cookies through a digital cookie. So Heather and I each <laughs> ordered cookies, and you could have them shipped to your home, and they already arrived, and so less so danger to, to the girls because you didn't they're not like the out and about and they can talk trying to talk to strangers and and possibly have oh. issues so. so i literally literally went to the site and um so i, I saw I, cl- I clicked on your link gary mm-hmm. and like cool and i went and i started putting your cookies and i saw and i did it all and then literally got a call like oh by the way doctor um, this is your doctor's office. You're pre-diabetic. I was like, never mind. <gasps> you still could have bought the cookies. You I just... could have. I can't, but I... Just this... as a warning, this is not a portion. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all can't see, but I'm holding up to the camera. This is not a portion. A sleeve of cookies is not a portion. <laughs> you still could have bought the cookies, though. It, it, I might it... still buy some. Cause but like you know, it. you know, you know them ruthless sales individuals are going to be outside of a Walmart or a grocery store or a church mm-hmm. or something trying to sell. Be like, I already bought some. If they're super crafty and they're in a state that legalized marijuana, they're going to be right outside the dispensary and they're going to sell out in no time. 